Hello and welcome back to Legally Bound, Business and Real Estate Explained. This is Joseph Rigari from Fox and Mogul. Today, we'll be discussing something that has had people a buzz over the last few weeks. Ed Sheeran and a copyright dispute over his song, Thinking Out Loud. Now, before we dive into the detail, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and join our community where we break down the hot legal issues in entertainment. Now, let's get started. First, some context. This isn't the first time Marvin Gaye's estate has engaged in copyright litigation. They famously won a lawsuit against Pharrell Williams and Robin Thicke regarding the copyright for elements of the song Blurred Lines in 2018. The key factor in that victory? The jury was convinced that the copied elements were entitled to protection, and the court believed that the songs, like Blurred Lines, were entitled to more than thin protection, meaning the song didn't need to be an exact copy, and the protectable elements of the song were close enough to lead to a finding of infringement. We'll get to that later. So, what about Ed Sheeran's case? Unlike in the Blurred Lines lawsuit, in which there were multiple different elements involved in the analysis, the argument here revolves around common chord sequences found in both Sheeran's Thinking Out Loud and Marvin Gaye's and Ed Townsend's Let's Get It On. Sheeran emerged victorious from this legal challenge. Here are three things to keep in mind when considering such a case. Number one. What kind of protection is being claimed? In Sharon's case, the contention was about a common chord progression that was so common, in fact, that Ed Sheeran's lawyers were able to come up with more than a dozen examples of the same progression being used. In other words, these were so commonly used in music as to not be original enough to be protected by themselves, as they are components found in numerous other songs. Number two, what can be done to fight back in such cases? The answer is, of course, to fight back especially when someone claims common building blocks of composition that aren't proprietary. Also, be careful about stating your influences. At least in some cases, it forces you to prove your work's unique aspects more strenuously. To be clear, the law after Blurred Lines case seems to indicate that this isn't as important, but it never hurts to be careful. If you incorporate an element that seems to closely follow another song, try to make sure that your song is unique from it in other ways, or that the element you're using is common to many other songs. Lastly, number three, how do you differentiate between thin and broad copyright protection? Think of it in the context of joke telling. If you have a three-line joke structure based on observational humor, the range of expression is more limited. Stating facts in a humorous order with a punchline would require very close following to be infringing. Similarly, in music, there are a finite number of pleasing chord progressions in each key. However, when the range of expression broadens exponentially, such as with different melodies, tempos, phrasing, backing harmonies, lyrics, rhythm, length, key changes, and tempo changes, you may not specifically need the other song to be an exact match to be in trouble. For thin protection, near exact copying of the work is necessary. When the protection is broader, perhaps less exacting copies can be in trouble. On a scale of a feature film to a three-line joke, music probably falls somewhere in the middle. So how close is too close? How many elements of a song are protectable? Your best bet is to think of a song as a whole, and to recognize the limitations of seeking protection of each small part. There are only 12 notes in an octave, and only so many four chord progressions that sound musically nice to listen to after all. In this case, thinking out loud changes up enough that while you might think, hey, that reminds me of Marvin Gaye, you're not thinking, and this just let's get it on by Marvin Gaye. Hence why Sheeran was successful in his defense. And there you have it. The world of music copyright can be complex, and every case is unique. If you're an artist or a songwriter, and you want to understand more about protecting your work, get in touch with us at our firm. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts in the comments section. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to watch the next video, Three Things to Do When Sued for Copyright Infringement, by clicking the link here. See you in the next video.